There are some bizarre new details emerging tonight in the case of Sherry Papini, the mom who vanished for three weeks only to be found tied up on the side of a country road. Her husband is now speaking out about the appalling condition in which his wife was found and about the rumors that the whole thing may have been a hoax. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth. Today, alleged kidnapping victim Sherry Papini's husband, Keith, describing a rush of conflicting emotions after the mother of two was miraculously found alive after 22 days. In a statement to ABC News, Keith says, the officers warned me to brace myself. Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to see upon my arrival at the hospital. Her face covered in bruises ranging from yellow to black because of repeated beatings. The bridge of her nose broken. He says his wife weighed just 87 pounds. He says her appearance changed radically during the ordeal. Her signature long blonde hair had been chopped off. Her now emaciated body covered in severe burns. She has been branded. He describes her being thrown from a vehicle with a chain around her waist attached to her wrists and a bag over her head after being held for more than three weeks. The brand on Papini's body a possible lead. Keith said it was already beginning to heal. I'm not able to go into the specifics of what the branding uh, is, but it could be a number of different messages there. Right. And you know what the brandings were? Yes. Did they say something? It is not a symbol, but uh, it was a message. To who? It could be a message to her. It could be a message to others. If you go deeper with this as to why they would brand a person, I think it's probably twofold. One, it's a control thing, and it's also they're trying to move her, in my view, further and further away from her, her identity. In his statement, Keith also expressing gratitude to everyone who helped his family through this torturous journey and contempt to those suggesting her disappearance may have been some sort of hoax. When you're looking at a profile of someone that would kidnap a female and cut off her hair, what does that person look like to you? Uh, obviously, a very um, sick person who may have wanted to not only cut it off to change her physical appearance, but also as part of that psychological um, warfare, if you will, to humiliate them. Earlier today, authorities met with Papini for the third time since she has been found, still trying to figure out who's responsible and why she was suddenly released. The only people that know that would be the abductors. Do you still believe you're looking for two Hispanic women and possibly others? Well, right now, still the two Hispanic female adults that are armed with a handgun. Shasta County Sheriff's Office is now focused on locating those two women Papini also said were driving a dark colored SUV. This really has the flavor of someone who uh, has been taken for a particular purpose, not to to ransom away or to maybe even to sell to somebody else. That's what makes this kidnapping extremely unusual. HP is advising she is uh, heavily battered and it is confirmed kidnapping. It's now been six days since Papini was found bound on the side of a California highway. She's been described by her family as a super mom. She vanished November 2nd after going out for a run. Her husband, Keith, immediately on edge, arriving home from work to an empty house. He began a desperate search using the Find My iPhone app. He located Sherry's cell phone on the side of the road a mile from their home with strands of her hair tangled in her earbuds. I went to pick it up, and at this point, everything that I was going through my head, I, I already knew something was wrong, so I immediately called 911. Keith passing a polygraph test early, ruling him out as a suspect. Just four days after she disappeared, Keith shared his shock and confusion over why anyone would target his wife. Everybody loves Sherry. There's no one that doesn't like Sherry. I don't have the words, but, you know, some sick type of, of thing. And also his desperate pleas for Sherry's safe return. Bring her home. Bring her home. Just bring her home. Then, in dramatic fashion, at 4.30 in the morning, she appeared. It was dark, just like this, when Sherry Papini told authorities her captors just dropped her off right there behind me, 150 miles from her home on Thanksgiving Day. Authorities say she was bound with restraints, but was able to flag down a passing driver. Other drivers were calling 911. I saw a woman come out of nowhere, 
frantically waving what looked like a shirt up and down. Keith telling ABC News that that shirt was actually the bag that had been placed over her head. I mean, she definitely looked frightened um, and like got a, yeah, she had like a wide eyed panicked kind of look. Allison Sutton was driving down this dark Yolo County road when she says she passed Papini and called 911. She pretty much just came out of nowhere. It startled me, but I figured, you know, if somebody was desperate enough for help that they were willing to be so close to traffic that they might get hit, that they really needed help. At the time, Sutton didn't know who the woman was. I do feel like I got to be a witness to a small miracle. Papini was treated and released from an area hospital where she was reunited with her husband, Keith. Together, they made at least one phone call to the mayor of her hometown with an emotional thank you for the community's support. Overjoyed just that she was able to talk and give thanks. And Sherry, of course, was tearful on the phone. And then I'm even talking about now, I'm getting tearful. I mean, it, there isn't anything better. Sherry has got a long road ahead of her from a psychological standpoint, as any of us would that would have experienced what it appears she has gone through in the last three weeks. With mystery still swirling about who's responsible, this Northern California community is on edge. Should the community be worried? The community should be concerned. Uh, and I always ask them to exercise uh, caution and awareness. For Nightline, I'm Kana Whitworth in Redding, California.